Thank you once again for joining me on Crunch Econometrics. We are still on our heteroscedasticity series. If you are just joining this tutorial, we have covered quite a lot on how to understand the nature, the causes, and the consequences of heteroscedasticity. We have also covered how heteroscedasticity can be detected using both informal and formal approaches. In resolving heteroscedasticity, we have talked about how functional forms of a model can actually eradicate that problem of heteroscedasticity. Now in this tutorial, I will show you how you can use the generalized or the weighted least squares in correcting for heteroscedasticity. On the screen is the stylized equation with respect to the generalized least squares. If you recall equation 1 that we have been using all along, equation 1 is heteroscedastic given by the error structure of the variance. With the sigma having a subscript i, it shows that the variance in this model is not constant. Now, to use the generalized least squares, you have to divide equation 1 by the standard deviation of the error term. And remember that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So dividing equation 1 by the standard deviation as shown in equation 2 transforms the model to equation 3. And that also transforms the variance to be equal to 1. So by the time you deploy the GLS approach, OLS estimators are now efficient and the estimates from equation 3 are now blue. For the weighted least squares, it is the same procedure as the GLS, where in this case, weights are used to adjust the variable. The weight in this case is 1 over sigma i, which is the same thing that was done on that GLS. So by the time equation 1 is multiplied by the weight, we have equation 4 as shown on the screen which is the same thing as equation 3 for the GLS model. So the GLS and the WLS can be used synonymously. You are going to get the same results. Once again, for the weighted least squares, you are going to have a weighted structure by 1 over sigma. And by the generalized least squares, you are going to divide each term in your model by sigma which is the same thing as multiplying everything in equation 1 by 1 over sigma. So the GLS approach and the WLS approach will give the same outcome. But we need to consider some points for the GLS and the WLS. There will be a difficulty to estimate equations 3 and 4 because the structure of the variance, the heteroscedastic variance, is unknown. So it is important to have a prior knowledge about the structure of this heteroscedastic variance before both approaches or either approach can work. In this instance, we are going to reconstruct the variance and multiply it by a known variable. This known variable is expected to have values across all observations, talking about an independent variable. So having the known variable, you divide the entire equation 1 by that known variable as shown in equation 5. So this transforms the model to what you can see in equation 3 prime. So equation 3 prime is the same thing as equation 3 under the GLS and WLS approaches. But now we know the structure of the variance being depicted by a known independent variable. So once we can reconstruct that, we now have a homoscedastic variance as shown right here. So the GLS and the WLS approaches correct for heteroscedasticity. But care must be taken during interpretation. This is because the slope coefficient of the variable that is used as the weight will now become the intercept of the model. And the prior intercept of that model now becomes a slope coefficient. For more on how you are going to interpret your GLS results, I will refer you to the references I have listed 
at the end of the screen. That is outside the scope of this tutorial. So if you are ready, load your data and let's get started. And if you still want to use my data, I have put the link to the file in the video description. The file is located on my website. Click on the link and you get the file. Before we go into the analysis, recall during identification, we're able to show that rooms drive heterosexual elasticity in the model and likewise square feet drives heterosexual elasticity in the model. So this is to tell us that we now have a prior information about the structure of the variance in this particular model. So we are going to use both rooms and square feet as weights to correct for heterosexual elasticity. So we are now back to A views. We go to quick estimate equation. We we'll list the variables with the dependent variable first, followed by the constants and the independent variables. Next, we click on options. Under weights, we change type to inverse standard deviation. The moment you do that, the weight series column opens up and we type in the weighted variable or the variable being used as the weight. In this case, we are using rooms. So rooms raised to the power of open bracket minus 0.5. Then we click OK and we have the results. So we can see here the dependent variable is price and the weighing series or the weighting series now is rooms. Inverse standard deviation. So this is a weighted least squares or a generalized least squares analysis. To test for heterosexual elasticity, we go to view, residual diagnostics, we click on heterosexual elasticity test. Using the Bruce Peg and Godfrey, remember that the dependent variable for the auxiliary regression is the square of the residuals and we click OK. So here we can see the results. The LM statistic is 5.10 and the chi-square at 0.078 is higher than 0.05. So using the GLS or the WLS approach has corrected for heterosexual elasticity. Let's do the second one by using square feet as the weights. So we go back to estimates. Equations here remain the same. We go to options. And here I change rooms to square feet. Click OK. So here we can see the result for the heterosexual elasticity test. The LM statistic is 2.905 and the p-value for the chi-square is 0.234, clearly above 0.05, indicating that the model is now homoscedastic. So this is another approach by which you can correct for heterosexual elasticity. You may be wondering, so which result am I going to take? In as much as we know that the two variables drive heterosexual elasticity, look at the result that gives you the best significance coefficients, the best diagnostics results, and stick with that. For more interpretations on the GLS uh, analysis, kindly refer to the references listed at the end of the slide. So as a recap, this is what we just did. Once we have applied the weight using rooms, we're able to correct for heterosexual elasticity. So we can see here, this model is now homoscedastic. Same thing for weights. Being used in this model corrects for heterosexual elasticity. For more information about the GLS or WLS approaches, please pick any of these textbooks, read for you to know how you can interpret your results. These are my uh, three go-to, easy to understand textbook. So if you are a beginner and you are struggling with econometrics, I will encourage you to either get Woodridge, Asterian Hall, or Gujarati. I know there are so many textbooks out there, so many good ones. But to the best of my knowledge, these are really, really easy textbooks that any beginner can relate with. So get any of them and read about the GLS and WLS approaches. So far we've covered all this. Please stay with me. My next video will be how we can use the white robust standard errors to solve the problem of heterosexual elasticity. Thank you so much for the support and the questions I've received so far in this tutorial. If you are yet to subscribe to my channel, kindly do so. 
and share my link with your friends, your colleagues, and the academic community. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.